Laptop computer spins onto the screen, opens, and displays ATP Education Program webinar series, closes, and then spins off the screen. Switch control on the Mac. So switch control is an assistive technology that helps you enter in text, you can choose menus, move your pointer, and, all, and more, uh, all by simply clicking on a switch. And we'll talk about switches in a little bit. But when we look at switches, you can use a wide variety of options for uh, switch use. You can use a keyboard um, and specific keys in a keyboard. You can use a mouse or a trackpad. Um, you can use a joystick or any adaptive device um, can be used as one or more switches. So this is just a video to show you um, what switch control looks like. Uh, you'll see the young lady who's a video editor who's using switches that are mounted off in each side of her head to be able to control the computer. So when we talk about switches, we're talking about the buttons that are mounted off to each side of her head, and she has full control of the computer by using those two buttons or those two switches. Um, and she's using what's called step scanning. We'll give a brief uh, overview of what step scanning is in just a bit. So this was a video that Sadie um, used, uh, that Sadie edited uh, for Apple. This was actually used as an opening keynote for Tim Cook uh, when they rolled out the accessibility website or the revamping of the accessibility website for Apple. Um, Sadie did, uh, she was the lead editor on this project and this is the vid uh, video that she um, edited together. In a kitchen, we move to an open bedroom door. In the bedroom, Sadie Paulson is reflected in a mirror. A caregiver brushes her hair, then helps her into a blouse. People think that having a disability is a barrier. Sadie sits at a desk working with an iMac. She moves her head to operate switches on her headrest. But that's not the way I see it. Now, a young man uses sign language on a FaceTime call. You can catch up with friends. A young woman signs back. Now a family picnics. Ready? You can capture a moment with your family. One face. Small face. Focus law. A blind man takes a photo with an iPhone. And you can start the day bright and early. A woman lies in bed using an iPhone app to open motorized curtains and turn on her lights. She lowers herself into a wheelchair. You can take a trip to somewhere new. A man hikes with friends. Now a close-up of his hearing aid. He stops to select the outdoor setting on his iPhone. Three miles to the summit. A boy reads a book on an iPad in class. You can concentrate on every word of a story. A bird began to sing. Jack opened his eyes. An athlete selects outdoor wheelchair workout on her Apple Watch. You can take the long way home. A beach at sunset. The athlete pushes her wheelchair aggressively down a paved path, quickly gaining speed. Then the footage rewinds, revealing that it's being edited in Final Cut Pro. Or edit a film like this one. We zoom out to reveal Sadie editing the film. She uses her head to use switch control, navigating an on-screen keyboard. When technology is designed for everyone. She drags a clip and plays the film. It lets anyone do what they love. Sadie laughs, then a gray Apple logo appears on a white background. The logo disappears. So Sadie edited that video by using those two switches on each side of her head. Now switch control is actually built into the operating system uh, on your newer Mac uh, operating system. So um, basically all you have to do is go and turn it on. Um, there's nothing to download. Um, you'll have to configure your switches, um, but uh, basically it's part of the operating system and it's available to anybody that needs switch control. So here are the steps that we will go through and I'll walk through these steps and this is also in your handout on how you would actually go ahead and access switch control, but it's pretty easy. Um, you go up to your Apple menu, you choose your system preferences and it's under the uh, accessibility tab and you'll be able to see switch control and you'll be able to just turn it on and off from that spot. So when we talked a little bit earlier about switch interfaces and switches, um, it's very easy for you to be able to find something that you can use as a switch. Um, you could use a mouse. Uh, you can use your trackpad on your laptop if you if you need to. Um, you can also use an, a joystick if you have an external joystick that's hooked up. 
Um, you can also use switch interfaces and basically what switch interfaces are are um, a external device um, that you would plug into your computer that will convert a switch click to something that the uh, your laptop or your desktop will understand as a keyboard stroke and with that switch interface you'll be able to um, be able to use the multiple uh, different types of switches so there's the Swifty the Don Johnson switch interface and the Tapio and the hitch are um, some of the switch interfaces that you may use you can also use other uh, switches that will be able to uh, interface with your um, computer such as the jelly beamer Beamer or the switch click USB. You also have uh, Bluetooth options. Uh, AbleNet makes a Bluetooth, which we'll use to be able in the demonstration of setting up a switch interface or switch um, control on a um, on the laptop in, a, in just a second. You'll notice that it has two switches that are um, built into the device. But there's also a plug-in, so if you want to use uh, external switches like the buttons that Sadie used, you can actually plug those in there and use those also. Bluetooth means that it's going to be wireless, so it's easy to be able to uh, wirelessly um, set it up and get rid of some of the wires that may be on a wheelchair. Uh, Tecla Shield and Tecla E. Tecla E is their newer switch interface um, that will allow you to be able to use uh, switch clicks from external switches to um, control your your laptop or your desktop um, but there's also some environmental control pieces that are built into the Tecla E it's pretty robust you can also use a wireless Bluetooth keyboard with the specific keys uh, you can also use a wired keyboard if you want also um, we talked a little bit about that earlier um, and there are specific keys that you can use there's the escape key the delete key uh, the enter return key and the arrow keys are the keyboards uh, keys that will uh, will you can use for switch control if you wanted to use an external keyboard for that so there's two types of scanning systems that you can use there's automatic scanning and step scanning uh, automatic scanning can be used just with one switch it basically starts a scanning process and uh, when it gets to the item that you want it will make that selection so here's an example of automatic scanning pointer app dock menu bar system custom location devices keyboard group one group two group three group four group group one group v b n M. Group one, group two, group three, group group one, upwards white right A. Group one, group two, group group one, group R. So I'll stop it right there, but you'll see on that it is there's a predetermined time that it does scanning, so you can actually control that that speed. Um, and uh, basically, you hit the switch. It starts that scanning process. When it gets to the item that you want or the line that you want, you hit your switch. Um, if you if you select a line, it will go item by item at that point. When it gets to the item or the key that you want, you hit the switch and it will select that switch and it will send that command to the computer. Again, um, it's click, you hit your switch and you wait to, get to where you're going to want to go. Um, so it, it does take a pre predetermined or it, it does take a certain amount of time to wait till it gets to the selection that you want. The other option you have is what's called step scanning. And step scanning will it requires you to have either two or more switches in order to be able to scan through items much faster because you're controlling the click speed by because you're moving manually but also you you uh, have the select option also so um, basically you can move much faster and you'll see it in this demo uh, I can go much faster because I'm moving controlling the movement and I'm making a selection so I'm more accurate because I know it's going to hit the item I want I don't have to wait for it to move to the button or it could actually move past it by the time I hit it so here's an example of step scanning keyboard group one group group three group four Group F, group group two V B N M group one group two group 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 one upwards Y A group one group group three group group two group three step group group R group one 
So you get an idea um, on how quickly um, you can actually move by using step scanning. So we really try to uh, push um, our users to uh, go to step scanning because step scanning is much, much quicker and you're more accurate. And uh, again, it gives you also more choices uh, because you can, um, you can really control that speed. So um, this is the setup on how to set up your switches because you need to set up your switches before you turn on switch control so it knows uh, what actions that you're going to require from the switch in order to activate either the movement or the selectment. This is going to be in your handout. Um, I'm just going to show you real quickly here and then I'm going to demo on how we're going to set up a switch uh, on your Mac. Uh, again, we can do set up two switches for step scanning and we can set up uh, one switch for automatic scanning if we want to be able to do that. So I'm going to go up into my Apple menu item and I'm going to click there and then I'm going to move down to system preferences. And within system preferences, there's the accessibility tab. I'm going to click on accessibility and I'm going to go down to switch control. Now I'm using a Bluetooth device so I would actually make sure before I did all this that I configured up and my Bluetooth device is selected. So we'll just pop that in there so you can see that. You'll see my Bluetooth device is connected. Um, and if it's not, then you would it would show up as an item that you would need to connect. But I do have it connected. So I'm gonna go over to where it says switches and I'm gonna uh, configure my Bluetooth device. So basically I hit plus to uh, set up one of my switches and I'm gonna hit the button on my switch and I'm just gonna call this blue because it's my Bluetooth select uh, move, I'm sorry. And the action is I want it to move to the next item and I'm done, okay? And then I'm gonna select my second one, I'm gonna hit my other switch and I'm gonna call this blue to select and you can choose whatever name you want whatever makes sense for you and then I'm gonna have it do the select item okay so now I actually have um, configured up my two switches so they're set up to be able to do um, uh, step scanning um, or they can do automatic scanning if I want to do automatic scanning I would click here and it's automatically going to do some scanning so just you'll be able to see it here I'm gonna go and turn on uh, switch control and I hit my switch and you're going to see it's going to go through and do the automatic scanning. I do have the volume turned down right now, but you can see it's scanning item by item at a predetermined time. Okay, so if I go in and I close out, um, I go back to my switches and I set up my auto scanning. I go back to general to turn it on. I hit my switch. One moves it. hit my switch to move, hit select keyboard, move, 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 select. And it's gonna select my item and send it through. So though that is um, uh, step scanning that I just demonstrated and before we had auto, auto scan also, um, automatic scanning. All right, so we'll just in the quick time here, there are some advanced features um, that are very, very powerful that you can use when you're setting up switch control. We won't have time to go through them all in this session, um, but just keep in mind that um, i just showing you ba basic um, scanning, um, but you have the directional or glide mouse. So you have a different uh, mouse that you can use depending on what the user wants. You have a panel editor, so you can actually create your own panels that are specific to the specific apps you want or specific applications on how you want to use it. So it really makes it efficient by creating your own panels. Um, it's application aware, which means that when I flip between applications, it'll know what application I'm in and will switch to the panel, which is appropriate for that. You can also use Apple scripts uh, to um, uh, create um, uh, a, a, a very streamlined workflow. And then you can switch platforms, which means I can actually control from my device, uh, from my, my Mac laptop, I can control my iPad, I can control my Apple TV, I can control a wide variety of, of, of devices if I wanna be able to do that. Um, again, you can you have mouse movement, you can do gliding, rotational mouse, or a directional mouse, so you have three different types of mouse movements that you can use. Panels, um, panels are used to add custom panels to your switch control. It can streamline common tasks and actions. 
You can also use panels in a, on another Mac or share them uh, with other switch control users. Um, there are a lot of resources that are out there uh, that um, will walk you through on how to set up uh, switch control for the Mac. Uh, Apple has some nice um, resources and some videos that are available out there. And these will are all available in your handout. Thank you for watching. For more information on the ATP Education Program, please visit our website at atp.nebraska.gov forward slash education or email us at atp.education at nebraska.gov.